I've been through a lot of hard things. I've been through a lot of persecution. I've been through just vicious attacks and backstabbing and lies made up against me, false accusations that really hurt because they were the opposite of what is true. And all this was, has been during, was during a time where I was really surrendered to God like never before and walking in obedience to God like never before. So it stung extra, extra bad. And when all this was happening, when so much persecution was going against me, and even to this day, what kept me strong and what kept me going was being after God's heart, was these two commandments that I focused on. God was calling me to persevere. God was calling me to minister to his people. God had entrusted me with anointing to release to his people. And people needed freedom. People needed healing. People needed salvation. And God chooses to work through people, through vessels. A lot of people struggle because they're thinking of themselves. They're thinking of how they look. They're thinking of how others see them. They're thinking about, oh my goodness, people are believing these lies about me. I cannot stand this. They, they begin to think, woe is me. I'm doing all these great things. And, and they're believing lies. Nobody's seen it. They should be seeing what I'm doing. That pride creeps in. When really, we were called to be a man or woman of no reputation like Jesus. And to do everything for the audience of one God. Paul actually says to be a true servant of God, you cannot please both people and God. So it doesn't, that means it doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what people think. It doesn't matter lies that people believe and creepy ways they're thinking about you, thinking you're a witch or something, thinking you've done things you haven't done, all these creepy things. It does not matter, even 1%. Because all you care about is what God thinks of you. You have died to yourself. You do not care what people think about you. God says they hated me, so they're going to hate you. You will be hated. It's no secret. You will be persecuted. This is part of it. It should not distract us or get us down. This doesn't prevent us from fulfilling our purpose and doing what God called us to do. We just have to keep on going and ignore it. Ignore what people think. Ignore what people say. And deny our flesh that cares so much about our ego and only be after God's heart. That's where people get hung up. They can't just be after God's heart. They are after their own heart, their own image, their own ego, and they end up getting stuck. But if you can really die to yourself, die to your flesh, surrender everything, lose your life, as the Bible says, you will be able to stand strong. You will be able to not sin in that temptation through that attack. Sinning by trying to defend yourself. Sinning by lashing out, going eye for eye. Coming with pride and becoming offended. You're after God's heart. You just see, God, your eyes are on me. You're pleased with me. So I'm happy. That's all I want. And that's where God wants your eyes. Through all of that mess that happens, through all of the persecution that happens, eyes on God. So that's what I did. That's what kept me strong. That's what kept me from, uh, you know, going eye for eye to people. When people would speak against me from um, defending myself and saying, no, this is the person's true colors. That's what kept me remaining pure and humble and full of peace and joy. And kept me strong to continue with the work that God's called me to do. That's the secret. I kept my eyes after God's heart. And I, and I saw God's eyes proud of me. I saw God's eyes saying, I'm proud of you. I'm taking you through the fire. And you are doing great. Keep up the good work. I saw him cheering me on. I saw him being proud of me for going through something harder than I've ever gone through before. And I experienced a new kind of intimacy, a, a new kind of secret place with him because only he knows my full heart. Only he knows the pain that I was going through. I, and I wasn't called to complain. I wasn't called to vent. I wasn't called to, God didn't want me to be doing those things. God called me to speak life. God called, called me to keep the joy of the Lord. So that means that I can't complain. That means I can't be speaking death. I gotta keep my eyes on Jesus and I gotta keep my mouth shut about other people that are doing me wrong. 
And so only God could see my heart. Only God knew the pain because I couldn't really unfold it in, all the way to anybody because he didn't want me to. Amen. <laughs> he didn't want me to speak words of death. Only God could see it. So that was a, a new kind of intimacy. And, 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 and that was a, the hardest thing I've ever gone through when I went through a period of, of, of this deep persecution. It was the hardest thing I'd ever gone through. It was the very hardest thing I've ever gone through. And so to obey God when it was the hardest season ever brings a new level of intimacy. Because when you can hear God accurately just by renewing your mind, you can, you can see that God sees and he's proud. He's proud of you in a new level, prouder than before because you're doing something harder that you've never done before for him. So I kept my eyes there after God's heart and received his love, received his words of encouragement, received his, his pride over me. That helped me to maintain my peace, even through tears. That helped me maintain my joy of the Lord. That helped me be strong and keep on doing what he was calling me to do when the feelings wanted to just relax, take a vacation, go away. But he was calling me to keep going forth and work hard for him. That's what kept me strong, was being after his heart, keeping my eyes on him, on his heart. How does God want me to speak? How does God want me to react to this? What do you want, Lord? Oh, you want me to be quiet. Oh, you want me to speak with, with uh, compassion towards my enemies, with kindness towards my enemies? You want me to bless them? I'm constantly looking after his heart through all of that hard time. Moment to moment, day after day, be after his heart. That's how to stay pure in the heart. That's how to be obedient and keep the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And not give in to that sin of speaking words of death. Speaking against people and being offended. Let your heart get all riled up and get angry and get offended. That's how being after God's heart. Hallelujah. And that, that's what God's looking for because the devil wants to stop you in your tracks when God anoints you. When God pours the anointing on you, you're going to face attack like you've never faced before. That I'm speaking from experience. I couldn't even dream of that attack that I was facing. I'm glad that my spiritual father, Prophet Dr. Drew Davey, who definitely sees and definitely saw it was coming, and he's been through it, so he knows. I'm glad he didn't tell me exactly how bad it was going to be because I could have given up. I could have lived in dread. But, but when I walked through it, I maintained my peace and joy because I kept my eyes on God. It was worth it. It was worth every second of it. Hallelujah, there is victory, there is reward, there is increase of anointing. So I don't mean to scare, I just, I'm just saying it gets real. I'm not going to lie to you that it gets real uncomfortable. It's unfair. God is a God of justice, but God's a God of justice in his timing, I have learned a God of justice in his timing, not in your timing. You want justice now, the next second, or at least the next day. Come on, at least the same year. Nope. He's a God of justice in his timing. Look at, look at Joseph. Joseph was in the pit. He was in the prison. He was as a slave. This was happened for years until the vindication came. David was chased for quite a while by Saul. Quite a long time until vindication came for him. Justice came for him. God is a God of justice, though. He is a God of justice. But it's, in, it's, it's, it's indeed in his timing. So that's, that's part of the really difficult part of it. That, 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 that's the part where you got to die to yourself. Die to what people think about you. Because you can have people be thinking the wrong thing about you for a long time. you got to learn to just die to yourself and not care. And just be after God's heart. Get used to being hated. Get used to being misunderstood. It does not matter because we are only after God's heart. 